Uh, welcome, guys. Yeah, uh, yeah. Welcome to my uh, second uh, group representation uh, lead lecture. So, uh, uh, I mean, I like group representation because I think it's final group representation because I think uh, it's interesting and uh, uh, there are many beautiful uh, theorem and the beautiful results here, but uh, also not so complicated. Yeah. So, yeah. So previously, we in the previous video, I only somehow construct so called. Uh, a regular representation and also only define a good representation that uh, only give a definition right okay so in this video uh we need to start to uh, we need to start to build a good representation theory and uh yeah so uh focus yeah i want to talk about a finite group okay so in a group representation theory uh the key idea is that uh, there are uh, there are uh, various ideas so one is short lemma also a complete uh, reducibility. Yeah, so this is what we will cover. Okay, so I should say I will cover characters and then also one entity relation. Yeah, so this is somehow like a finite group representation uh, feature and the uh, irreducibility uh, criteria. Okay, so Okay, so the key the key idea is that uh, now uh, we given the finite group, right? We can define, a, let's say, V is a finite dimensional vector space, and we can define this is called group group representation, right? So, okay, so the natural asking question is that uh, uh, how can we find how can we find all group representation? Uh, oh, okay. how should you say I can how can we find a finite group representation a finite group yeah we we are working the finite group right but I mean finite group re representation means that uh, the vector space this n is finite uh but, and also for the complex field how can we find all of these right so I mean so uh so intuitively uh you should think that uh, there are infinite group representation okay so the key is that uh Okay, so the results, the results I think, uh, so I think everyone knows is that uh, the answer is just a direct sum of the irreducible one. Okay, so although we didn't talk about uh, what was irreducible representation, yeah, but uh, we'll be talking about very soon. Okay, so, so the key idea is that you, you need to, in the final group, the results, you need to prove that uh, any group representation, you can find a so-called reducible one, and you can always decompose it. So this is called a complete uh, reduce, uh, reducibility. And uh, also irreducible criteria, just say that you have a so-called reducible representation. And uh, among different irreducible representation, there are also bonality relations. Okay. And uh, the character is somehow like the help or the, the helper function or the some uh, characteristic for you guys to, uh, for you to get the also one entity relation easier. And then the short lemma are very, uh, I mean, the key theorem in the, in all, among all the group representation. Okay, and then there are only also a very important uh, quantity that we will call the gene variant in a product. Okay, so I think the larger flow is that in the finite group, you can construct a gene variant per, in the product and the, uh, uh, so this is the first great ingredient. So the second ingredient is short lemma. So once you have these two, then you can prove the rest for uh, just follow uh, follow easy. So in this video, uh, I focus on the gene variant in the products, and our goal in this video is to prove that any group representation can be decomposed into the irreducible. Okay, also sure, I, I need to talk about what is irreducible representation. Okay, so, um, okay, so let okay. Yeah, so, yeah, but in, in order to prove it, we need to uh, define a thing called the G linear map. Okay, so just in a, in a, a vector in a, in the mathematics, right? If you study the vector space, you need to study the linear transformation. If you study the manifold or topological space, you will see the you are looking at continuous uh, continuous function. Uh, if you're working in a ring, then you will study the ring homomorphism. If you work on a group group homomorphism, module module homomorphism. So somehow, like in the mathematics, that people define some abstract object, then you start then you start to study the the morphism between the different abstract object. Yeah, so you, you can view this as like a category uh, of the group representation, yeah, but I, I will not talk about it. So you can, 
uh, you can go to my other video talk uh, to see the category uh, introduction to category. Okay. So basically, all the group representation can also form a category. Yeah, this is the famous representation category. Okay, so I will talk about this uh, in the future. Uh, maybe, maybe in some in some case, but uh, not in the detail. Okay, so now, uh, so the key is that if somebody give you two uh, representation, one is V, one is W, and then suppose you have a function, a linear map from V to W, it's called a G linear. Uh, means that the following diagram commute, right? So let's say uh, you have V and V, right? Because, so given any G, right? So given any G, you have this row one G. Uh, remember row one G is a general linear group element, right? So this is a, a matrix, and the W, W, and the row two G. And uh, your linear transformation F should serve like this, right? So such that uh, this diagram commute. So uh, let me just write down means that F row one G is the same as row two G. F uh, for any vector, right? So, uh, if you want, yeah, this is the definition. But if you want to write as very uh, tedious, you can su suppose there is a vector v, small vector v. You act on row one g, it become another vector. Then uh, you use f, right? So this this is a linear map, become a vector in a w. So row two g f means that uh, f of v, right? So f of v is a vector in w, and the row two g is automorphism in w. So this is a vector in w. So both hands are a vector in the W and they should be the same. Okay, suppose suppose you, uh, yeah, I mean, if you want to write tedious, okay, but you know this, okay. Okay, so, yeah, this is a GD name. Okay, so there's another a quick definition is that uh, if, if F is isomorphism, right? So F is isomorphism means that in this content means that F is not, is isomorphism as a linear map. So F is one to one on two. And uh, also a G-linear map, then we call F is isomorphism. So it's usual isomorphism plus a G-linear map. Okay, or another definition is that you can find inverse, okay, such that, uh, yeah, you, because it's isomorphism in a linear map, so you can already find inverse. And then you can check that F inverse is also a linear map, it's also a G-linear map, if F is, is a G-linear map, if F is a G-linear. Okay, so this is just a simple exercise you can check by yourself. Yeah, so then this is called the isomorphism. Yeah. So it so if two if two uh if two rep uh have f right so basically if you can find f which is the isomorphism so obviously that f is isomorphism as a linear map right so the dimension of v must be necessary conditions that, that they must be the same right if two rep they have this f isomorphism condensed then we say uh, they are the same. They are isomorphism. So they are isomorphism means that they are uh, as a group rep. So I, I say two rep isomorphism means that uh, you can find a GD linear map connected it. Yeah, so they are isomorphic. Okay. Okay. Uh, yeah. Okay. So next, uh, next uh, we can talk about what what do we mean by uh. What do we mean by isomorphism? Okay, so this is just uh, some uh, some remark. This is not so important. Okay, so right. So suppose you have two v and w. So now they are isomorphic if they are the same di dimension, right? And uh, let's say you have row one g from g l v and then row two g from g l w. Okay, suppose a has a one uh, a n as a basis, and uh, so this is basis for v. And then B is the basis for W. Okay, then dimension are both N. And uh, so if so, let's assume that they are isomorphic. So they are the same isomorphic. And uh, uh, you can easily check that. Uh, okay, so, so let me just prove. Okay, so uh, okay, so let me see. so. So, uh, so for each one, right, each one, then uh, you can have the matrix representation. So that means now row one can be viewed as, let's say, right, then it's A. I mean, there's row one in the A basis is from G to general linear group C, and the row to B will be G to general linear group C, right? So, uh, yeah. So what I want to show is that if they are isomorphic as row one and row two, that means uh, these two, right, are equivalent. 
So what I mean equivalent is that uh, what I mean equivalent is that uh, you can find a P which is invertible, which is uh, the linear map, right? So from V home to V to V. So just learn by the matrices such that uh, your row to BG is the same as P inverse row one A G P. Okay, and uh, this is if and only if. So let me just, uh, okay, so uh, let, let me just, let me just write down as theorem. So theorem says that if row one and row two are isomorphic, then uh, if, if and only if there exists a P, which is invertible matrix and my matrix is such that uh, row one A is P inverse, uh, uh, let me just write row two B is P inverse row one A P. So, so this means that they are the same, right? So uh, they, they are equivalent as a matrix uh, for any G, for any G. Okay, so uh, this is, and this is isomorphic as a G linear map. Okay, so now here, here's a, here is a proof. Okay, uh, I think this proof is not difficult, right? So let's just, let's quickly do this. So suppose you, you have F, so let's assume they are isomorphic so I can find an F, uh, V from W is a group, J, right? So I can map F A. So A is a basis, right? So this is FA1, FA2, da, 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 to FAN. Okay, so now just now just uh, test your ability in a, in a linear <laughs> algebra. Right? So yeah, e easy to think that is isomorphism. So these guys are also basis, right? So that means uh that means uh they are they are also basis, right? So now if you take any to take any G, you fix the G. So this row one G A K, right? By definition will be M I K A I i from one to n okay so this m this means that uh, this just tell this is just the another uh different uh another writing way to say that uh, row one g uh a in the a represent in the a basis is just m right so this is the this is just nothing but linear algebra right and uh, so you can use a g linearity of use the g oh sorry f g linearity of f you get your row to g f on f a k Right, it's the same as a uh, what? It's the same as. Remember that the row two and f are commutes in the sense, right? So it become row one g a k. Right. So. Right. So this is just what? This is just uh, summation m i k right f a i. Easy to check, right? Because this guy is this, right? So just f on f. F is a linear, right? So this is i from one to n. Okay. So. But no, 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 you're, you're, no, you're just proving what? No, you're just proving that uh, you just change your basis, right? So from here, from here, right? You know that the row two, F on F. So in, in the row two basis, F on this F, right? They are just like this. They are just, a, they're, they're just a change your basis of original, original uh, linear map, right? So this, you see, you just a change your basis. Right, so this is just the standard change of basis way, right? So that means you that means you you already proved the results, right? So remember that in a linear algebra, once you only if you only change the basis, there exists a P such that uh, these they are connected to each other. Okay, so now you use a G linear map, uh, G linearity of this F, and then you easily show that uh, you easily show that if they are isomorphic, it means that there if it is F. And so FA just a change your basis. And then you figure out that, oh, this is a change your basis, okay? Yeah, so then you you you, you see that the row to G account, it's just a change your basis. So you prove this result. Well, so this is nothing but linear algebra, okay? Yeah, this is, e uh, this part is easy. Okay, so then now how, uh, this part. So suppose you guys find P, right? Such as row to B, just uh, let's say, uh, P inverse row one A P for any G. Well, somehow I'm lazy. So somehow I don't, if I don't write G, that means for any G. If there's a P here, right? So in order to prove, we need to construct F, right? So we need to construct the junior, the isomorphic F, right? So, so let's define FW uh, to be what? Uh, F verb to W uh, be a linear, be a linear map. Uh, by the matrix P inverse with, uh, with respect to the basis, to the basis. Also, so this sentence just say that uh, in the original, we know that if you only change your basis, 
then uh, so now in in this case that you you you're just saying that uh, this row one and row two are somehow like the same, right? So they are the same by they are actually the same by just changing the basis. So for any g, uh, this looks like you just change the basis, right? Because there is this p. So this is once you write anything in a linear algebra like this, that means that means you just change the basis, right? So you can define uh, this f v to w be a linear map such that this p inverse just respect to this basis, change your basis, right? Then by the like by your linear algebra, you know that this f is isomorphism because you just uh, do the change of basis, and uh, the reason is that p inverse is invertible, right? So your linear algebra just tells you that if you have a matrix which is invertible, such so it means that means it must be isomorphic, right? So so fine. So there's nothing to nothing difficult to prove that f is isomorphic, and the only thing is that if I know you need to show that f is a g linear, so f is g linear. So we want to show this. Okay, so uh, what we need to show is what? Just F row one, the same as row two F, right? So now I'm be so lazy, okay. But but this matrix algebra tell you that P one row one, right? It's the same as A, it's the same as uh, P row two B, P inverse, right? So for any G. All right, so now, so now everything become uh, stupid, right? Because now you have this, right? Uh, but in a in a certain in a basis, right? This in a certain basis, this sentence is exactly the same as this sentence. Okay, so you're done. Right? Because you can write because you can write because we know that in a in a linear algebra, the linear map is the same as it's one to one. Once you fix the two bases, then it's one to one corresponding to the matrices. So if you write these words as the basis, then it becomes this word. So yeah, so now we prove the result. Uh, okay, so one sentence, of course, uh, not every GD linear map, right? Not every GD linear map is isomorphic. Right, because we in, in, in this theorem, we only, we assume that uh, they are the same dimension and they're, so we just prove that if they are isomorphic, if they are isomorphic, then uh, there just uh, looks like a change of basis, right? But this is just this. This does not mean that every linear map is isomorphic. Okay, so once we have this uh, linear map idea, then we can start into actually this linear linear map idea uh, will only be used in the in the next video. Okay, but I I need in this video I want to talk about uh, the the another important idea is a G invariant subspace. Or the or or, or subrepresentation. Okay, so uh, suppose we have a uh, we have the Google representation. A uh, G invariant subspace means that it, uh, if there exists W, which is a subset of V, uh, should be not the not the same as V. Okay, such that uh, and also non-empty. Then otherwise it's trivial. Such that. Uh, any G, row G. So row G can map W as another subspace, right? Sit inside W. So that means you, if you forget about V, then the, this is another, this is sub-representation of original group representation. So we talk about this, is called, we talk this called G invariant subspace. Okay. Okay, so theorem, which is uh, uh, the important one. So if you have a G linear map, so F is a G linear map, Right, so from let's say uh, f is junior map from uh, row one to row two, two of them are uh, group representation. Then we want to talk about the kernel f, right? Because uh, this is a linear map. So theorem says that the kernel f is a, a g invariant subspace of what? Of v, right? Because f from let's say f from v to w, okay? And the image f is a, another g invariant subspace. So people use G invariant subspace or sub-representation uh, interchangeably. So you can, uh, yeah, but I, I usually like to use the word G invariant subspace. This is just my own convention. You can you can talk about sub-representation, but it's actually, I think it's the same thing. Okay, so this is a theorem. Uh, I think it's not difficult to prove. So let me just prove the first one, okay? Kernel F is a G linear invariant subspace. Uh, yeah, so what, what we are showing is that, let's say, uh, so what, what we are showing is that, uh, suppose, let's say, W tilde, oh, so V tilde is the kernel F, 
right? So remember that kernel just anything x c x and v such that uh, it maps to zero, right? And uh, we need to show three variance of space v. What, what it means is that uh, if you let row one g act on the kernel f, I right, should see in kernel f, right? So that means what? That means uh, f act on row one g, any element should be, f act on this guy should be zero, right? So why, why, why should you say that, uh, uh, let's say, if I pick up v, so I pick up, let's say, uh, maybe y, I pick up y belongs to v tilde, uh, and when you, and I want to show that this is true linear, right? Actually, it's true invariant. So that means, uh, uh, that means what? That means I need to prove that row one, uh, g x on y, take f, right? Should be zero, right? But this is trivial, right? Because f row one g is the same as row two g. <laughs> okay, so now you guys see the trick, f of y, right? But f is uh in the cur, but this y is in the kernel, right? So row two g. Zero should be zero, right? Because this is the linear map on zero vector, so it's not zero. Okay, so we prove. Okay, okay so we prove that the. Uh, uh, we so we just prove that the row one g on kernel f, uh, will still be in inside kernel f for any g. Okay, also image f is also uh simple, right? You just check. Okay, so maybe maybe let's prove it. Okay, so image f, right, is also a double invariant invariant subspace of w. Okay, so the reason is that uh, let's say you take row one g, right? So uh, of w, so you need to start on row two g. So any g invariant means that uh, any image f means that the vector is looking at let's say f of x, right? For x in a v, but this is the same as f row one g x. Okay, so row one g x is a uh, what? It's another vector in the in a, it's a, another vector in v, right? So by definition, this is false. This guy just the image f, right? Because so yeah, trivial. Okay, so once we have this, then we can start to uh, once we have this, then uh, let's talk about the uh, results called the uh, uh, Menkes theorem. Yeah, so this theorem is uh, what we gonna to prove to prove. Are we gonna to uh, the theorem to prove that uh, uh, the this complete uh, reducibility. And we can start from here and uh, get to the so-called irreducible representation. So this is the trick. Yeah, before I show lemma, this is also like the foundation. Okay, so uh, yeah, so let's let's just quickly uh, give the idea. So the idea is that uh, uh, okay, so this is just the topic. I, I didn't I, let's just uh, do some observation. So yeah, so one one way to construct a group representation is to in a vector space, one can construct a sum, right? So obviously that if you have row one G, which is a, another one group representation and the row two W is another group representation, then you can construct a row one, so-called row one plus row two at the V direct sum W. Okay, so this is a direct sum of representation. And I think this is easy, right? Just define a, a let's say if you, if you define V direct sum W at on G, just row one, uh, sorry. So this row one plus row two act on the V, any vector in the V tensor with a V, v at W, right? It's just will, will just be the row one G on V and the row two G act on W. So just, just spell it out. Right? So just spell, uh, sorry, just spell row one V and row two is separate. Okay, so in the in the, in the matrix form, just look at a block diagonal, right? So this is row one, this is row two, they all zero. Okay, so this is the direct sum of the group representation. So basically, once you have this, two, the direct sum, of, uh, you can direct sum of two vector space, right? So you can direct sum to group representation. And the definition just row one plus row two act on the V plus W is the same as just define to these two least once you have this. Okay, and uh, there's a theorem that uh, we will not, we will use, in a, uh, we will see in the future. Oh, we, we will see now it's very trivial. Okay, so row is, let's say you have a representation of V, right? Suppose you can find two representation. So let's say you find two invariant subspace. Suppose you have two invariant subspace, let's say uh, U and W, such that they are all the, they are all the subspace of V and such that uh, the first thing is dimension U, uh, sorry, the first thing U intersection W is trivial. And also uh, dimension of U, plus dimension of W is the same as dimension of V. 
So in a linear algebra that uh, if you have these two, right, you will immediately say that V is, uh, you can immediately say that V is a uh, U direct sum W, right? So this is as a linear, as a linear, uh, okay, I should say as a vector space, right? Because in a vector space that only two, in a vector space that any two vectors with the same dimension must be isomorphic. So, and also they are intersecting with zero, right? So you can start from here and it's easy to show that the V is just direct on U, direct on W as a vector space. But what I'm saying is that if, if U and W are both G invariant, then this is just V equals to U direct on W as G as a group representation. Okay. So that means that you can decompose uh, once you have these two G invariant subspace and then there are in the same zero and dimension match with that V, then you can merge them to get, you can merge them to, to get your original Google representation. So this means that uh, there is a way to, there should be a way to decompose V into the smaller subspace until you cannot decompose anymore. Then this means that you can start from here to see the so-called irreducible representation. Otherwise the irreducible representation comes nowhere. I mean, if you study physics, then people just told you that there is so-called irreducible representation, but start nowhere, right? You don't know what the, what the hell is going on. Okay, so this proof, uh, I, I think it's, I, I skip, right? Because this is just tautology, right? Once you know this, then you just you just write down, you can just directly write down V, you can just directly write write down the, uh, write down a definition, right? Because it's string very subspace and you already get this, you know this. Right, so then you just write as a block diagonal form. Right? So this is proof is just uh, simple, right? So I, I skip. Okay, so now the question is, so the question is what is given, suppose, uh, uh, right? So suppose you get rho and V, suppose uh, you, so suppose given that you, you find some W which is a G invariant, so which is W means subspace of V and they are not the same. Okay, can can you find can you find a partner? Can you find a partner U? Can you find a partner U, right? So this is the problem is that our theorem tells you that if you have two G invariant subspace that satisfy these two property, then you can decompose. So but the problem is sort of question is that given you, suppose you already find W is a G invariant and then the G is a subspace of V, can you find the partner u, right? So can you find the top, the partner of w, u, such that the u is a g invariant, such as g, g invariant, and also uh, satisfy the u intersection w is non tree uh, it's empty, uh, so it's zero vector because there are subspace and the dimension is the same. Uh, the problem is that can, can you find this one? Can you always find the partner u? So the answer is, Yes, yeah, so this answer is just uh, uh, Maskey's theorem. Sorry, there's no here. So this theorem just tell you that the answer is yes. Done. Okay. Yeah, so this is the theorem that uh, we got on to prove. Okay, so let me, uh, maybe let me just uh, prove the, the detail in the, in the next video, right? But uh, in, in, let me just quickly, quickly, quickly hand wave it. Okay, so the hand waving, uh, yeah. So the hand, hand waving idea is that uh, uh, hand waving idea is that you you need to find a general, uh, you need to find a G invariant counterpart, right? So in a linear algebra, in a linear algebra, that uh, in a linear algebra, you know that if you, since we are working in a complex uh, vector space, right? So there is always a inner product. Right? So in a linear algebra, you know that the W direct sum W complement will be the whole vector space, which W complements that all the vectors such that uh, it come it's in it's perpendicular to original vector in the uh, all the vectors all the vector in Y, right? So in the vector space, you know that uh, this is right, already true. So all you need all you need is to uh, all you need is to find the W uh, such that the uh, W complement is G very Right, but oh, but this just means that uh, you need to find a so-called G invariant, G invariant in the product. So all you need is the G invariant in the product, G invariant in the product. 
Okay, so what 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 I mean, gene value in the product means that uh, means that uh, if you if you work in a group representation and you row one g wrote uh, row one w, suppose you so suppose you can find inner product such that row one g v row two row one g w is the same as v w. This is called gene variance. Okay, so let's let's prove this result. So once you can suppose you can find this right, then you can easily say that w complement is gene variance. Okay, the, the, oh, maybe use large. And then the reason is that, uh, uh, let's maybe quickly see a proof. So you can, you want to prove that this guy see in this guy, right? So uh, so let's, let's suppose that you take a vector, maybe Y here. And uh, you, you, you use this vector and uh, uh, compute the inner products with any vector W. Let's say you take another vector X. Okay, in the W. Let's say this is X. Okay. So, uh, 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 this row one G is a group representation, right? So it's generally linear group. So it's this, which is a, uh, which is iso, uh, which is uh, invertible, right? So you can just write it as, I think you can just write as row one G, Y, and the row one G row one G inverse X. Okay, so this, 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 no, so this, this is G invariant, right? So this guy is still in W. So you can write it as Y dot uh, row one G inverse W by just using this. All right, that means this is Y and then this guy is inside W, right? And the Y is inside, so Y is inside this. So that means, this is zero. <laughs> okay, so row one g y. So row one g y. Uh, oh, then, then let me just let me just you know use the eraser. To, I think this proof is very clear now. It's very it's already proof. Use red. Okay, so yeah, still be right. So row one g y you can x. So remember that y is a double complement. And uh, so you use this and the X on this, X, X is another vector in W. So row one G, Y, row one G, row one G inverse X, right? Remember W is a G invariant, so this is like W. So you get Y and the uh, row one G inverse W, right? So you one G inverse X on W. So it's not, it's not W, it's X, right? So this guy is W in, in W. So Y in W on uh, the zero, right? Because by definition that uh, Y is W complement. So you get row one G, Y, uh, X on W is, X on any X, which X in W is zero. So that means you got this. Okay, so you show that uh, W complement is G variant, right? Okay, so once you prove this, then uh, yeah, everything is done, right? Because we, we just manually prove this theory. Okay, so from now, you know that uh, we, 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 so we know what? We know that suppose you have a real representation rho and V, and as a vector space, if you find another G invariant subspace, then uh, the G invariant inner products, if you have a G invariant inner products, then it will give you another complement, right? And then, but the dimension will be lower, right? So, so this is dimension V, this is dimension W, right? So the, this dimension will be less than this, provided G is non-trivial, non right? So you can, you can keep going and decompose this U complement, keep going, right? So finally, your results should be, get you any representation V should Get like v1 directs on v2, da, 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 this v up to vn, right? And all of these cannot be decomposed anymore. Okay, so this is these guys are called irreducible representation. Okay, so shit, we spent 30 years just talking about 30, 30 minutes just talking about the reducible representation conference. <laughs> Okay, so the, the there is only one detail that I didn't prove here is why, uh, so how to find G invariant in a product. Okay, next video, see you guys.